Pentecostal revival first came to the attention of kind of the mainstream press in 1906, when newspapers started covering a major religious event known as the Azusa Street Revival. Here's an image of, uh, of the mission on Azusa Street in Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Times reporting this weird babble of tongues. New sect of fanatics is breaking loose. That's the subheadline. Wild scene last night on Azusa Street. Gurgle of words, talk by a, of wordless talk by a sister. What is this reporter, this bewildered reporter, talking about? All right. Well, Pentecostal leaders had been traveling the country for a few years at this point when an African-American hotel waiter, a guy named William Seymour, picked up this message of the radical power of the Holy Spirit to work in you and through you. He'd gotten this uh, from a revivalist. He heard teaching in Houston, and he traveled to Los Angeles and brought it with him. Now, he probably wouldn't have been most people's pick for likeliest evangelist to ignite a worldwide revival, although that's what he would come to do. He was a son of former slaves. He was born in Louisiana in pretty impoverished circumstances and actually raised as a Roman Catholic. He wasn't even raised as a Protestant. But as a young man, he had fallen in with the holiness movement and he felt called to preach. And like many early Pentecostal evangelists, it was a near-death experience that did it. He almost died of smallpox and lost an eye, but he believed that God yanked him back from the brink and wanted him to do this work. Seymour is uh, second from the right in the front row. Here's um, where his revivals were based initially. He came to L.A. with really no money, no followers, but he started holding prayer meetings at the house where he was staying, and pretty soon he was drawing huge audiences to the front porch, so big that they had to move to this abandoned warehouse on Azusa Street. 